Today I'll be showing you how you can create a fully responsive navigation bar using React and Tailwind CSS. And as you can see here, I have a navigation bar which has a logo, some few navigation links, and then a login button and some few information about the home page. And as you can see here, the home page is currently highlighted, which means if I come to the about page, the about page will be highlighted. Every time I change the, the URL location, that link gets highlighted. And if I come back here, you can see that it works as intended. If I inspect this, you'll notice that it is fully responsive in all devices. And let me expand this. And you can see now we have the logo. We don't have the links, but we have this menu icon. If I click this menu icon, you can see that it works as intended. If I click on the about and then come back here, you can see that it is highlighted. If I click the X mark, it closes the navigation bar. So that's what you are going to be creating today. And we are going to use Vit for the for setting up our React. And then you are going to use Tailwind CSS for all our styling. So what you are going to do now, you are going to open a, an empty Visual Studio code. Here it is. And then after you have opened an empty VS code, you are going to open a new terminal. Then let me expand mine so that you can see what is going on. Then you're going to come back to our browser and you're going to start by looking for Vit. Hit get started and then scroll down here until you find this NPM. You, if you're using Mac, you can use the AN. And then let's do this. And then let's paste it here. Or I can close this for now and then let me use the git bash okay so let's use git bash first you're going to cd into where you want your navbar to be saved and then for me i want it to be saved in my desktop and then you're going to save it to copy paste that and then you're going to name it as navbar and then choose react and then choose javascript cd into your navbar and then hit npm install to install all the dependencies and then wait for it to finish after the dependencies have installed you're going to hit code dot so that we open it in its own vs code and then we can close this one for now do the same for the project which is opening a new terminal so that we can install tailwind css okay and let's open a new terminal then i'm going also to change here then come back to your browser, look for Tailwind CSS, and then hit get started. And then if you come directly to following these steps down here, you, you're going to notice that your CSS stylings does not work as intended. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit framework guides, and then you're going to hit vid. And then we have already done this, so you're going to copy this. Then come back here and then let's, let's first delete all this. Come back and copy one by one. Let's first install this one. Then come back and copy the second one. This one. Then wait for this to install and then install the other one. Let's paste the second one. And let's come back here and let me show you something. For this highlighting to work, we need to we are, we normally use the use location when we are using React. For me, I use use location from React Router DOM. But if you are using Next.js, for that you use the use router. So we are going to use the React Router DOM. So we are going to look for it. So let's do Router DOM. Here it is. You are going to open it, and then you are going to come to Tutorial. Then you are going to scroll down. You're going to see here these steps. I've already done all this. So what you're going to do, you're going to copy this one. The only one that says npm install. So you're going to copy this one. Then come and paste it here. And then we can now close our navigation bar. But you're going to come back to it. And then let's scroll down to where it says adding a router. And... It says that to create a router, we are supposed to do this. So let's copy this first, and then we are supposed to put it in our main.jsx. So let's come to our source folder, and in our main.jsx, 
we are going to paste it here because we need this and I'll be showing you why and then let's copy this one okay and then we are supposed to replace our app now with our router so let's come and copy the last one and then paste it replace the app with this one shift alt f to format and then let's open our terminal again and now we want to run our application so let's do npm run dev and after installing tailwind we need to add more more we need to do some changes to our code so let me show you before we do that you can see here we have the hello world and it's it it showed us the hello world because we have changed the app here to router and so that we can be able to see the content for the app app.jsx we are going to just replace the hello world with our element which is our main page which is app.jsx come back and now you can see we have the vit react running and by doing this you can notice that our tailwind has not yet been added because there are some steps you're supposed to do so come back here we did the install tailwind and then we need to configure our template parts scroll down and then copy this because we have not yet changed our tailwind.config we are going to update it with the code from tailwind and then let's paste it there and then it's saying add the tailwind directives to your css copy this one come back paste it in your index.css and then paste it also in your app.css I normally use the app.css so I delete this one and then come and remove it in my main the JSS, JSX but having it as that doesn't actually do give us a big difference because we are going to do app.css of which we are not going to write any external CSS for this. So let's close all this and then let's come back to our running application and now you can see that all the stylings are gone. So to create our header or our navbar, we are supposed to create a components folder. A components folder and then inside it you can do navbar to gsx. And then hit refce so that you get that content and you need the ES7 extension so that you can be able to do the refce. You need this ES7 React Redux snippets. Okay. So let's close this, come back to our main.jsx and here you can see that in our application, in our this application that I've showed you, you can see that if I click the about page, the header doesn't change position. The only content that changes the one in our body element. Okay. And to do that, we need to come here and update this one. Below the import for React Router DOM, we need to do another constant which is going to be layout. Okay, here we are defining our how we want our layout to be to look like. Okay, and then inside here, inside the layout, we are going to return. And then, first, if like we had a like a full application, we would have some content here and then a footer. But for this video, it's only for the header. So we're not going to have a footer. What we need is the data inside our body and then our navbar. And the first thing to add here is our navbar so that we can get it. Make sure you import it. And then we need the body content, which you're going to do it as outlet. Make sure you import the outlet from React Router DOM. If we had our footer, we, are, we would come here and add a footer which we import from our components. But for now, we don't have our uh, footer. So if like we come here and add very many pages, they are going to be added in our outlet. But our navbar is never going to change. So let's come below here and you can see we have the path element. We are going to change this from app to layout. Then this layout is going to have some children, okay? Which is now the content inside our application this children is going to be an array we are going to first start with the page we have it's going to have a path and the path is going to be the home page and now we can add the element which the element is our app okay like that and if we come back here nothing changed except that now you can see that we have an app here okay so we are done with the main.jsx but we are going to come back when we will be adding 
around for the about so that we check if the highlighting works so let's come back here and i'm supposed to add uh, some content for the home page and remove the current one so let me just paste it here and then come back it's saying that let me i have a code here that i'm supposed to remove which is this I'm supposed to remove this then come back then now you can see we have some let me refresh we have this home page data and then you have our navbar here so let's come back and start creating our navigation bar first you're going to edit this let's remove this and then add this and then our navbar is going to have a header first and this header is going to be maximum we're going to add a margin x of auto left to right which is auto so let's do that and then we are also going to add some few stylings which are background color we need a background color of white the maximum width to be extra large so let's do maximum width to be 7 excel actually and then we need a border bottom and then let me come back to my application here my website and come to the home page you can see when like i start scrolling the header doesn't like go up right let me let me come back and let me show you let's first change this to let's say red and then 700 right and then we can come here and do a padding padding of six so that like you can see what like i'm talking about we have this and then you have this content if i start scrolling down here you'll notice that our header goes up and if you don't want to do that your header to do that you can come to your header and then add these classes you can add sticky to make sure that it is stick to the top add the top of zero and then add a z index of any let's add 50 so that's like any data that is being scrolled up it doesn't come on top of the header it comes below the header okay so let's come back and try that if i start scrolling down you can see this content moves but the header is now sticked to the top okay so let's come back and remove this change this to white then let's remove the padding then if i come back here we are supposed to see just one thing which is the border bottom we are not supposed to see anything because we have removed the padding but we'll be seeing something in some few minutes so inside here we need a navbar and this navbar is going to be fl flex the items inside it are going to be flex we need the items to be center we also need to have justify to be between and then you need padding of four and then an md padding of six and then in lg we need a padding x of eight padding x of eight if i come back now you can see we are able to see the border bottom then inside this navbar we can add a div which is going to hold the logo so let's do a div here inside this div we can add an a tag which is going to have some few classes which are flex and then it's going to take us to the home page let's come back before you add classes here you can see that we have an icon and a logo so we're going to see we have two things here the icon and the logo we need to them to be in a straight line we add flex we need them to be centered so item center and then we need a gap to separate the icon and the logo we can add the gap to be one and then we need the text to be large and then we need a color of red which is going to be just 600 okay so inside here we need an svg icon and to find that you're supposed to come to hero icons so there's hero icons and then we can use the icon i used or we can just use another one let's copy this one the spider one and then paste it here shift alt f and then below here we can add our logo text then come back to our application and you can see now we have a logo okay so below this div we need another div for if like you are in mobile devices we actually need a logo here in the menu icon so that when we click it we're able to see the content and that's what actually happens in our main application we have this with this icon which opens the navigation bar so that's what we are going to we are going to add the button and then you are going to add its functionality later for that button let's come let's come back here and below this div we need another div let's do flex and then we can add a button 
this button is going to be just have a um, margin of 2.5 and then what else we can do inline flex and then items to be center items to be center and then now we need more stylings for this one such as justify to be center but you need this justify to be center in case like you want to add some text so that in case like it's loading on the icon doesn't show you show some text for it let's do rounded in md in case you want to add an a background color let's do a padding of 2.5 2.5 and then let's do a text to be just gray and then 900 we can do hover we can do a hover and the hover is going to be text red text red to be just 600 and then we need a transition when we hover transition yeah and then we need the duration to be 100 and then inside this button you need just the menu icon so let's come here and then add look for a menu of which we have them here we can use this one or any of those make remember to format and then come back to application you can see that we have it here of which we don't want to show it in large screen devices we only want to show it in medium or mobile devices right and to do that so that we are not able to see it we are going to just come here and do in md we just do hidden come back here and you'll see that it's gone but if we inspect you can see that you can now see it when you're in mobile phones okay so now what you're going to do next is to add our links and to do that we're going to come below this div and add another div which is going to be hidden because those links are supposed to be let's first do the div itself okay let's do flex first before i start explaining and then inside here we need that spacex of eight to space the icons and then now inside here we need a an ordered list which is going to have a class name of flex i think it's flex and then the space x of eight x of eight then inside here we need lists okay so you are going to have li and then you can do five li's there's no problem with that and then inside the li's we need let's add some a tags inside here we need some a tags let's just do the refer start let's say the text is home and then come and add some few class names that are going to be global for all of them so for these class names we can do text to be large and then we can also do font to be medium but you're going to remove these stylings here so let's do font to be medium and then leading to be six then we can just do a text of slate and then 900 and then we can do a padding of four let's let's leave the padding first then come back here and now you can see we have icon we have links what you're supposed to do is update this so let's do about then change this one to be services right services or anything and then this one to be contact and then this one to be pricing pricing okay then come back we have that what else do we need we need a button and to add that button we're supposed to come below here below the ul and the div we need a button so we're going to add a, a button and this button is going to just take us to that and then do login let's come back you can see we have a login button but i want the button to look like this so let let me come to my gsx and just copy like the stylings for it they are supposed to create your own button so inside here let's add the classes the class name shift alt f and then let's reduce the padding x to be eight and then the padding y to be three that's better and then let's change this text from sm to md let's now see you have that padding y to be you can do two and then you can see now we have the button there and we have the links but 
we don't want if we come and inspect you'll notice that now you have the links here and then you have the button you have our menu icon we don't want these links to be visible in mobile devices so what you're going to do is we are going to add hidden here and then you can see that they are gone we only have the button of which you're supposed to add this button in in the navigation bar where is the nav you have the nav here which okay let's first come here and do hidden and then we want this i this links to be only visible in mobile devices in large screen devices you can see that they are gone so i'm going to do md here then also do md here and then we are, we are supposed to do the same here let's come back let's come back and you can see our links are back but we don't want the button to be visible here in mobile devices so what you're going to do is you're going to start by adding hidden and then do in md we need that button to be like that and now you can see that the button is going to only left with the menu icon if i come out of here you can see now we have the navigation bar but we need to make sure that the links are colored like are highlighted so to do that we are going to come below here and we are supposed to declare some few things first thing to declare is the location the url okay so let's do location const location is supposed to use location this use location is supposed to come from react router dom and then let's come back after we do the use location we need some active classes right so if i come here you can see that this one is highlighted and the other ones doesn't are not highlighted to do that you're supposed to come below here and do an active class okay so let's do an active class which is going to show the active classes when a link is highlighted and then we need an inactive class const inactive is equals to that now the inactive classes are just these classes that we have added here so let me just copy them Control c and then Control shift l to remove them and then come here and add them here now we also need to create new stylings for the highlighted link so first we need uh, the text to be large so let's do that let's do text to be large we need the font to be bold we also need a padding x of six we also need a padding x of we need a padding x of six and a padding y of three so let's do a padding y of three and then we need a bg color which is going to be gray and then 300 and then you also need the text to be red the text to be red 600 and then we need rounded we need rounded and then we need leading of six and then let's come below here and let's remove this and then we want to do this we are going to check if the location and then dot path name is the same as the home page let's do the active class and if it's not in the home page let's we have missed something let's come back we're supposed to add the question mark for the condition and then if it's not active we want to do inactive okay inactive so if you come back to our application you'll notice that all of them are now highlighted and we need only the location that is highlighted so here we are going to say about and then here you're going to say services services and then here you are supposed to add contact and then you are supposed to add pricing here okay pricing and then you're going to only create one page which is the about page so let's do about here and then now you can see that all of them are no the only one which is the home active class is the one highlighted but you can see that you have an issue because the other one looks like this and then this one looks like this so to do that you can see that you know in act in our active class we have a padding so we're going to just add here padding x of six padding y of three 
and then we are supposed to add a hover so that when like we hover we get a certain color okay so let's do text then red 400 let's come back and now you can see that they are separated and now when i hover the color changes so what do we need to do we need to check if our about page will be highlighted when like we click on the about page so let's come here and i think the padding x is a lot but we can do just remove the where is it let's come back but i think they are better like that we can remove the classes we added for the padding and let them be just for instead and now you can see that we have added padding x of not like padding x but a padding of four for all of them and if you come back that's better so we want to check if our about page will be highlighted so let's come back let's come here and add a page you can the best way to do it is to create a pages folder and then add an about dot jsx page and then do rafce and then come to your main dot jsx and then below this we are going to add another children which is another child which the path will is going to take us to is going to take us to about and then the element is going to be just about element is going to be about make sure you import it and then if you come back you'll notice that now if i refresh here let me see when like i was creating this page i realized that we get an error because like we import this as it is and i think for now it doesn't do that so let's come to a our about page and then now you can see that our about page gets highlighted if you come back to our home page it gets highlighted you can do the same for all these pages so now what you're supposed to do is to create our functionality for this button and if i come back here and i inspect you'll see that it looks way much better so to do this you're supposed to come to i think it's headless ui okay and here you can see it's saying unstyled fully accessible ui components and we are going to use the dialog for that one this dialog so let's copy this we are going to install it but don't use this code because it's going to give you something for the dialog but you're going to write our own dialog okay just install your dialog let's close our main.jsx our about page and then let's come and open our terminal let's open our terminal and then let me remove it from here and then install the dialog let me collapse the terminal then minimize this so now below the navigation bar or inside below the navigation bar but inside the header you're going to add our dialog and Let's do dialog. Make sure you import it from headless UI. It's going, we are going to add some few things inside the dialog. So we are going to do as here. We're going to be as is equals to and then div the dialog as a div and then class name. Let's do some class names here because we don't want it to be visible in large screen devices. We only want it to be visible in mobile devices so let's add some classes here and say in md we want it to be hidden and then if i come back you'll notice that you have to provide an open and an on close prop to the dialog component you're going to do that so let's do here we want to do open so when we do open we want to open the mobile okay mobile and then we have not define these ones we are going to define them and then on close is going to be set mobile okay so we need that use state come here below the inactive classes and define these ones so let's do cons and then mobile and then set mobile is equals to use state which is going to be just 
false make sure you import it from react then come back we are not supposed to have the error let's see yeah so now when we click on the dialog we want to show the navigation bar so below here we need a div which is going to be just fixed so let's do a div which is going to have a class name of fixed we need an inset of zero we also need the z index of 50 50 is better and then you need a bg of gray 50 and then we need the opacity of the background to be 80. this one i'm going to show you where this one applies okay so let's do bg opacity to be 8 and then this div is supposed to be self-closing let's do a self-closing div here and then now below this one the stylings that we have added for the this ones bg gray and bg opacity is you can see if i come here and then open the navigation bar everything like it doesn't work here but i'll show you it blasts the the background content so let's come here and then let's do some classes for the dialogue panel so let's do a dialogue and then dot panel like that and then this dialogue panel is going to have some some few classes so let's do class name is going to be supposed to do a class name class name but this panel is supposed to be capital p make sure you change that class name we are going to have fixed let's do fixed we are going to have i inset y of zero so let's do inset y of zero we want it to be on the right so let's do right to be zero then do an index of 50 and then also do overflow y of auto so let's do overflow y of auto add the background of white add a padding x of six and then a padding y of six of which you can just add up a padding of six and then in sm we want to have maximum width of small let's do maximum width of sm and then we need a ring so let's do a ring and then which is going to be one and then we also need sm to have a ring text of so let's see a ring text of 10 so let's say ring text of 10 and then what else do we need we need a width of screen let's come back i don't think we're able to see anything yet so actually we are supposed to come to the button the icon itself which we added as a button here was it here yeah and then this button is going to have an on click so that when we click it we open our dialog so let's do on click not inside there but inside the button let's do on click on click this one on click and, and it's going to just do let's see it's going to set mobile the state that we have defined above we're going to set mobile to true set mobile to true come back here and then let's click this one you can see now we, ha we are getting a white background which means that our navigation bar is working so let's come below here and inside the dialog panel we are going to add a div for the links so let's do div this div is going to have flex item center so let's do flex item center to have justify between justify between and then margin bottom of three this one is for the logo and the x icon so we are going to just come here where we defined our logo and then copy this a tag and then come and paste it here shift alt f come back to application and you're supposed to see our logo there and then we need an a button for the the same button we added here so let's just copy the button itself 
and then come and paste it below the a tag shift alt f and then this one is going to it's not going to open the model it's going to close it so let's do false here come back and then you have this if you click it it closes the model but we don't need that icon we need an x icon so let's do hero icons and then look for the x mark this one let's copy it and then replace the svg with it shift alt f come back here and then let's open the model now you can see that if we open it and close it it works so now we need all our nav links but first let's copy the nav links where are they we have the nav links let's copy the whole ul let's copy first the ul and then scroll down and before we paste the ul we need to come below this div and then do another div which is going to have a margin top of six and then it's also going to do flow of root so let's do flow root and then we need another div inside here which you can do as an navbar but you need a div let's do a margin y so let's do margin y of two and then we need to divide y divide y and then we can do the divide color to be divide to be gray and then 500 and with an opacity of 50 and then now inside this div is where we are going to paste our nav links shift alt f but change this from flex so let's just remove this and then let's do space y of 10 so let's do space y of 10 because now it's going vertically and then padding y of 6 so if you come back and then open our model you can see now we have all our pages if i click the about and then open back you can see that it gets highlighted now what else do we need we need our button so come below the ul and then add another div this div is going to be padding y of six and then inside here we need the a tag which we added above somewhere here this one for logging in Control c then come and paste it here shift alt f sorry let's do shift alt f then come here and click the navigation bar we're supposed to see the button but i think we added hidden so what you're going to do you're going to remove the hidden from md let's do block in small devices and then let's do md of hidden of which let, let's see we get the button there but we actually have a hidden in our dialog so we actually don't need this let's remove it and then if we close here and then open here you can see that our button successfully works what we only need here is to remove this we don't need the width of full but you can we can do with the full and then do item center so let's do items to be center to place the text not items but the text to center and then now you can see that you have successfully created a fully functional navigation bar which you can use in all your projects if we come to the home page and then open here you can see that it works if i close the inspect you can see that your navigation works as intended so that brings us to the end of our video make sure that you subscribe leave a like comment and also share the video i'm going to see you in the next video